Hi, this is an introduction to accuracy and precision and also the types of error that affect them. My goal is for you to understand the difference between accuracy and precision because they're often used interchangeably, but they are not the same thing and to understand what kind of errors contribute to both. So have you ever said this? I know I've been in conversation and somebody says something that is just so right and you're like, yes, precisely. What do you mean when you say that? Usually people are like, yeah, I totally agree with you. You're right. Okay, being right is actually being accurate. Yes, precisely technically means you got it reproducibly. Not usually what we mean when we're talking about this in public. So most of us use the word precisely incorrectly or wrong, given that wrong means inaccurate. Okay, so what am I trying to get here? That correct is accurate, precise is reproducible. All right, hopefully that as you go forward with your life, you will now think every time somebody says yes precisely, you're using that wrong, <laughs> okay? Um, moral of the story here is that accuracy and precision are often confused with each other. And so if you're struggling with keeping the two straight, then it's understandable, but you do wanna know the difference. Accuracy and precision are usually covered with a dartboard. We've got four darts boards here. The one that you want, the happy one, is this one right here. You want to hit the bullseye every single time. The bullseye is your target. It is the truth, the correct value here. And so to be accurate means that you've got nearness to the truth. You are right. So on average, you've got an accurate situation both here, which is also precise because reproducibly, you're able to hit the bullseye with very low spread, but you are also right around here, okay? So that one's accurate as well, but it's imprecise. Um, I like to say that this is the way I play darts because I rarely hit the bullseye, but I'll say, well, on average, I hit the bullseye. It doesn't really fly, right? So you want both accurate and precise. You want to be in the top left corner here. But there's also the other condition. The other two plots here are when you do not have accuracy, okay? You are not averaging to hit the bullseye. And so yes, precisely could mean this graph as well, okay? Where you hit the, hit the same place over and over again, but you're not hitting the bullseye. I like to call that when I'm playing darts, the admire the grouping effect, okay? That's cute, that's funny, not what you want from an analytical chemistry analysis. And then what you really, really don't want, like super, super bad, is if your data is both imprecise, meaning it's very scattered, and it's inaccurate. All right, hopefully that helps you to understand the difference between accuracy and precision. So how do we quantify these things? If being accurate means being correct, then you can do a measurement of error. Okay, so error is a measure, measurement of accuracy. There's absolute error, which is just the difference between the obtained result, so this is the one that you actually measure right here, and the expected result. Usually people will instead use percent error, where you're taking the difference between the obtained result and the expected result, and hopefully that should be small. You want to minimize that difference. And then you're dividing it as a proportion of the expected true result, multiplying by 100%. So, Low values for error are desirable. But how do we know what is true, accepted, or expected? Well, you have to get something like a certified reference material, which an agency like the National Institute of Standards, NIST, has done many measurements on different techniques from basic physical principles and tells you this is true. Okay, so you need to have a true value in order to know. All right, so. Percent error, absolute error from a standard gives you a measurement of your accuracy. Precision, because it's a measurement of spread, we rely on standard deviation and its friends. So as a refresher here, standard deviation is the individual sample. So that little marking right there is X sub I for individual measurement. Difference from the mean, which is your typical average. Square all those differences and add them up. Okay, And then N minus one, remember that's the number of measurements. 
it's not a hashtag, it's a number because I am not 12. Okay, number of measurements, okay, minus one. And then you can also do percent relative standard deviation, which is abbreviated percent RSD. Some people call this coefficient of variation or CV. So if you're looking at older analytical methods, you should know that these are the same thing. Simply take your standard deviation, divide it by the average value, multiply it by 100%. It gives you a proportion. I love that one. Very helpful. And then lastly, you can also do variance, which is just the standard deviation squared. Okay, so what causes these things? We have two types of error. One is systematic error, one is random error. They have alternative names. Determinant is systematic, indeterminate is random. It has to do with whether you can find and determine the cause. Okay. Determinant error that has an actual cause systematically is what affects accuracy, whereas random error affects precision. Usually your systematic error is coming from some sort of flaw in your equipment or experimental design, and your random error is coming from an uncontrolled variable. The thing that helps you identify these is that systematic error is going to be reproducibly positive. So every time you do it, it'll be offset a little bit. It's always going to be a little bit high. Or every time you do it, it'll be offset in a different direction. It'll be a little bit low. Okay. Uh, or maybe a lot of it. You never know. But it's reproducibly wrong in the same direction. That's systematic error, and that affects accuracy. Random error is equally likely to be positive or negative, and so these tend to cancel each other out a little bit over time. You cannot fully eliminate random error. You always have some. Systematic error, if you are lucky and careful, you can find what's causing it and you can eliminate the cause. And that means that you can have an accurate measurement. Examples here, miscalibrated equipment um, are really common ways to get systematic error. And then there's a whole bunch of random error noises and stuff like that, and I'm gonna get into that more right now. Remember, there's always random error. Okay. So more on the causes. We'll start with systematic. These are the things you can find. One of the first and foremost issues is if you have a bad sample, okay? If your sample is not representative, whatever you took of it isn't really representative of what you're trying to measure, doesn't matter what else you do from that point on, bad sample, bad result. There's going to be another topic of sampling soon. There's the method error, which is maybe something like you don't have a blank that is accounting for all the factors in your sample, or you made some sort of assumption, like maybe you're weighing a precipitate and you're assuming it's pure, but it's not, that kind of thing. Um, measurement error, every single thing that you use, equipment, flasks, balances, will have some error in it. Like they'll say it's a 100 mil flask, but maybe it's somewhere between 99.8 and 100.2. And so you need to know what's the likelihood that it's gonna be shifted from the label and by how much. So those are labeled, you can get those tolerances. And then there's personal error. This means reproducible bias that you've introduced. For example, you personally failed to calibrate something. It's not the instrument's fault. Balance that you weighed stuff on is labeled to a certain tolerance, but maybe you forgot to tear it. Okay, so that's a personal error that's gonna cause an offset that's going to be there. Um, there's also the matter of like reading a scale. So we know that if you're looking for liquids, you've got the meniscus, maybe you've got a line on a flask, the black there is your line and the blue is your water, so you want to be reading the bottom. And so if you're holding the flask and you're looking at it straight on, right, straight on, you might get the line right. But if you're always looking down, maybe you get the line slightly wrong. And if you're always looking down, reproducibly, you're putting a personal error bias in there. Okay. Random error. These are things that um, really have to do with your precision, right? So one of the terminologies here is repeatability. This is your best case scenario, usually. It means one person, one day, same solutions, same instruments, same equipment. So nothing changes. How close could you get it if you did it exactly the same way every single time? Okay. Then there is reproducibility, and there's a bunch of other versions of this, and this has to do with changing those conditions. Like maybe it's a totally different lab with different equipment, you're just following the same procedure. That is often called like a round robin study, where you send the same samples to a whole bunch of labs and they test it. Um, or maybe it's the matter of how reproducible are you between your measurement this week and next week, or between Jim and Sally on two different spectrometers. Right? 
what is enveloped in all of this random error is the fact that when you have random error, it is going to include the fact that you can't do something the same way every single time. You've got some inconsistency where you're sometimes high and sometimes low in, say, sample preparation, like cleaning, or in reading a scale. So the other thing is that your instrumentation that you're using can have some variations due to electronic noise or from variations due to heat. Okay, to summarize, got your graph here. What you want, the good fashioned smile here, right here, is to be both accurate and precise, okay? Accuracy means correct. This is governed by determinant or systematic errors. And you could in theory fix these. Like if you find that you didn't calibrate your equipment, you can calibrate it and then this will be gone. You're gonna measure a known sample, okay? And you're gonna calculate the percent error from this. But you always have to remember that truth in analytical chemistry really means the most trusted value that we have. So somebody has to do that and usually you wanna trust a certified lab. Then there's precision, which is your measurement of spread. That is governed by indeterminate or random errors, sometimes high, sometimes low, that we describe by standard deviation and variations thereof. And the thing is to remember that you always have some sort of random error, which you can minimize by taking more samples or to simply try to do things the same way every single time. So you want precise, you want accurate. Precise means true and correct. I'm sorry, huh, see how easy to mess it up. Fun, I almost planned that. Accurate means true and correct. Precise means reproducible. You got it the same every single time. What I like to remember in order to keep this correct is that the word correct is almost inside the word accuracy. All right, good luck and peace.